So in case you've been living under a rock, I've started every ban list video that way, I think. A new ban list just came out. This is the one that's going to be legal on October 14th. It's the one that we've all been kind of talking about and waiting for. And so it's here. And it was kind of a surprise. I'm really glad that Konami's been doing this like so promptly lately, the last few ban lists. So yeah, in today's video, we're going to go over all of the changes because that's what you guys like to hear. So uh, first of all, we've got Forbidden Cards. Guard Dragon Agar Pain. This is A-OK -okay with me. Thank goodness. I really was not a big fan of Guard Dragons. You guys know this. At first I was on the LP train, like the, you know, get rid of LP, get rid of LP, but now I actually totally respect, you know, the Agar Pain hit. I think it makes more sense in hindsight. Agar Pain is the card that breaks the mechanic, you know, like summoning Hot Red Dragon Archfiend or Crystal Wing or something like that straight from the extra deck. Just feels like it's very mechanically unbalanced, like, you know, you're supposed to actually have to get those monsters out with specific materials and stuff like that, I have to actually work for them, and this was not okay for me. It also sucked because a lot of decks could just toss in a guard dragon engine, like, just randomly at the end of a combo and then, like, end up with a hot red or something in addition to everything else they made. So this is a really good hit. I'm glad that this is happening. Um, the guard dragon stuff can still play, so that's cool. But um, it just, you know, the broken part, I think, is gone. And also, Nightmare Mermaid. So this is the one that everybody, you know, we've all kind of been saying it for a while now. Nightmare Mermaid needed to go, and gone it is. So, uh, yeah, two more Link monsters, you know, Bite the Dust. These were two that, I mean, honestly, I think you could have seen it from a mile away. When Konami makes, like, Link monsters that just bring out something for free, that tends to be kind of the red flag for this probably just needs to get banned. So, um, yeah, you know, Nightmare Mermaid being gone definitely means that Orcus combos are gonna be uh, significantly more difficult to incorporate into different decks. Um, later on, I'll talk a little bit more about how I think that it's not like a dead deck by any means, but um, yeah, Nightmare Mermaid makes a lot of sense. It's also the only card I think that they really could have reasonably hit because it's hard to ban or like hit other Orcus cards just because of like, most of them are played at only like one or two, so it's a little tricky. So yeah, those are the only two banned cards, two more links. Um, so, limited cards. Only one, Sky Striker Mecha Widow Anchor. Now, I think it's no secret that I have been kind of more of an advocate for just limiting Engage to one instead of Widow Anchor, but I'll, you know, I'm not gonna complain too much here. Widow Anchor is still an almost equally annoying card because of A, you know, just being able to negate things is annoying, but also being able to steal things and like randomly go for game can make Sky Strikers feel very like tough to play against and sometimes even sacky, both of the cards can really. So I think that Widow Anchor going is pretty much a good thing in my book. Um, not gone as in ban, but just gone as into one because it means that yes, they can use Widow Anchor, but it also means that, you know, there's less like random Widow Anchors that can happen. It means that once this card gets banished after using it with multi-roll, it's effectively gone. And that's a really great thing. I think that makes Sky Strikers infinitely more bearable and uh, you know so yeah all right we only got one card that actually went to semi limited so as you can tell it's not like a hugely crazy ban list in fact the rest of the cards are cards coming off not actually going on so um semi limited we've got dark arm dragon this is pretty cool I, I it's been a while it really has been a while since dark arm has been at two like nearly a decade um so yeah, I, I think this is cool. Dark Arm Dragon is a pretty neat boss monster that you can use in a lot of dark decks. And since dark is still kind of the attribute of the day right now, I think this will actually see some play. It is searchable. Um, even though Eclipse Wyvern is gone, you can search this with things like Brotar. So that does make it a relevant sort of threat. I think it will come up. And this can be used in, you know, the Orcus builds that we will still see and, you know, Burning Abyss, any other kind of dark warrior decks, which we'll get into here in a sec. Um, I think Dark Arm can be played in a lot of those and will see play. And it's cool. I think it's still fairly balanced. I mean, like, Effect Failure and Infinite Impermanence will completely, like, turn it off for a turn, but it also doesn't have a hard once per turn. So, mm, yeah, like, be careful, you know what I mean? And then finally, we get a bunch of cards to three, and I think this is probably the most exciting part of the ban list for most people, actually. So, Super Rejuvenation. This came out of nowhere. I had a hunch because they did put Super Rejuvenation on that Lost Art promotion poll. If you didn't know what that was, you could vote for the next like cards to be included in like next year's Lost Art promotion. And the Lost Art of Super Rejuvenation is um, the one where like the dragon's leg is like damaged and bleeding and stuff. So 
Um, yeah, I'm assuming that'll be one of the Lost Ark cards so people can maybe get their hands on it again. But yes, so Super Rejuvenation. This is neat. It seemed a little risky, but maybe not. The main thing is you get to draw in the end phase for cards that were, uh, for dragons that were tributed or discarded. And currently that doesn't actually happen to dragons. Most dragons are going to be getting maybe linked away these days, but rarely tributed or discarded. So this is extremely good for a Heratic deck. If you're a Heratic player, you'll know this is quite a strong card for them. But I think it's pretty balanced in that it draws you cards at the end of the turn. So that kind of means that it's not going to be like extending combos. It could help you grind though. And you'll still always have to discard cards. So like, you know, I was thinking that maybe this would have come with the um, you know, freeing of another dragon ruler or something, but no, that isn't the case. So as it is now, I think this card's actually pretty safe. Um, next is El Shadal Construct. This is a huge one. I think a lot of people are going to be really freaking out about this um, because A, you know, we're going to be getting a Shadal Structure deck at some point next year, probably. So, you know, having Construct of 3 kind of sets the wheels in motion for it to be like a very strong playable deck. I think that, you know, as like current, in the current like state of things, it's actually not like a huge deal. I don't think Shadals are going to be like, you know, wrecking shop and like winning loads of events. But it is worth noting that with Constructed 3 and Super Poly 3, Shadals are more or less, I mean, like at the full power that they've kind of always been at. So, or, you know, back in like 2015, 2016 days. So, you know, I don't know. We'll see, right? Like that's a, that's an interesting thought. Next is Chaos Emperor Dragon. I don't think this makes a lick of difference. This thing is not great with its erratas. So like, you know, whatever. Um, Destiny Hero Malicious to three. Now this is an interesting one too, because Malicious, if you've played Yu-Gi-Oh for a while, you'll know Malicious has been on and off and on and off and on and off of these ban lists for ages. Like, you know, like it's been a two and three and two and three. And the thing about Malicious is just that like, it's a dangerous card to have at three because when it's at three, you can, you know, you get so many free monsters out of the deal and Link monsters in particular make a lot of use of free monsters. So what this means now is if you summon Armageddon Knight, for instance, then, you know, you now have access to one Malicious and then another Malicious. And like, you can see where that gets like pretty crazy. I'm guessing that this is kind of a big boon to like, meant to be a big boon to just the hero decks. Heroes continue to get more support. They've kind of just been getting it this year. They're gonna get some more next year. Um, the thing is, I mean, even though Armageddon Knight's a one, like Vision Hero Vion can like kind of do like a lot. There are a lot of cards that can do sort of the same thing, like sending heroes to grave and all that stuff. So I'm curious to see if this will get abused again and end up right back at two. It wouldn't surprise me. But in terms of like Link Monster abuse, now that you know, Mermaid's gone, now that Summon Sork is gone, and like Firewall is gone, I actually don't know that this will get you very far in like a Link Ladder. You can make Azold and do things with Azold, but like after that, you know what I mean? Like, where does it go from there? So, interesting thought. Um, Ether the Heavenly Monarch, this is cool. Uh, it, it's a strong card, but again, without Pantheism, I don't think that Monarchs are going to be you know, dominating anytime soon, but if you're a Monarch player, this is still a really great, a nice treat. Stratos to three is awesome. Um, I, I'm like, I'm led to believe heroes might actually have a chance of being like a truly competitive deck at this point. I mean, Malicious at three and then like Stratos at three and Dark Arm Dragon at two. Like, I know for some of you guys that means nothing, but if you think about like, you know, what Teledad was back in its day, with like triple stratos and like triple malicious and you know dark arm dragon it uh you know now yes I'm, I'm obviously it's not going to be like you know the top tier threat that it once was but that's still really cool to think about i mean we still have three e-call and like rota and this means that you could actually feasibly use destiny draw and like malicious and kind of have a little draw engine going you could make a little teledad thing um, I think that's neat. I, I think that even if you're not playing that, just the hero deck in general is, yeah, I mean, it's really cool. Um, Insector Dragonfly. So with this back at three, we basically have Insectors also back at nearly like, you know, full power. There's give or take exceptions um, and like power creep. But, you know, still Insector Dragonfly at three is, that's cool. Like, I don't think that this deck is going to be, again, like super duper meta. But it's cool to see. Like Konami is really finally filtering a lot of these cards off the ban list. 
There are a few more that I still would like to see, like, you know, the wind-up thing, but this is a good start. Shritch, Badges of the Necroz is also at three now. I actually would have preferred Unicorn going to two than Shrit going to three. Like, yes, it gives Necroz just a hair more consistency, and that's great, but it, uh, like, there still is, uh, like, Unicorn is the thing that I think makes Necroz a huge threat because it shuts down so much of the opposition, whereas Shrit's just another consistency card that they don't need, need a lot of. It helps though, I mean, I'm not gonna complain. Um, and then finally, Royal Tribute at three. So this is interesting. Uh, this is the first time we've seen Royal Tribute at three in a pretty long time. Um, does it suddenly make Necro Valley like a top tier type of thing? Gravekeepers, nah, it's not really searchable, you know, but this is still pretty dangerous just because if you do resolve this, like going first as a gravekeeper player that's kind of that right like you know you just your opponent's hand is is gone and there aren't really reliable ways of negating that either so um yeah i'm kind of interested in seeing like where that goes if gravekeepers do become a rogue strategy or people have to kind of respect the threat of the royal tribute and find some type of counterplay to it because i i think that'd be really cool to see and that is basically it for the ban list itself. So a couple of quick thoughts because I really have only just seen it and haven't gotten the process entirely. Um, so where does that leave us? Guard dragons. I think guard dragons are still playable. I think there's no reason not to like still use LP and Pisty if your deck can support them. They still get you a lot of free stuff. So, you know, like why not, right? There are going to be decks that do that and just kind of take the advantage where it comes. You can still get a lot of different things from your deck. You can still summon Red MD straight from the deck and like get more dragons on the field. You can still summon Brotar and get searches. You can still summon a number of different things. Um, in addition to that, I, I mean, you know, I feel like it's still meant to be a played deck. We've still got like rocket support coming out. We've still got some dragon support coming in um chaos impact so i mean it's it's meant to be played and i'm glad that it's still in a state where that can happen i just don't think it'll be like the super splashable engine that everybody like added on to the end of a combo same with nightmare mermaid right this means that not every deck just gets to make a free orcus combo but i do think that the orcus deck itself is honestly totally fine i you know like yes they use nightmare mermaid to get to orcus nightmare and like start a combo but there's plenty of ways to start, you know, these combos without it. They can still use something like Armageddon Knight and just kind of like, you know, use, like, they, there's a lot of things. Like, they can use Armageddon Knight and just send Orcus Nightmare and kind of like start from there. You can still get to things like Harp Horror, Symbol Skeleton. I think that the, the Orcus deck will still be a deck. It's just a little bit tougher to combine it with other things. And for me personally, that's a-okay because it's, you know, I don't hate Orcus, I just hated like Nightmare Mermaid. That was my thing. So I think Orcus will still be probably winning, probably at the top tables to be honest, but just the hybrids are gonna be tamed a little bit and that's cool. Um, so as for Sky Strikers, I actually still think they'll be playable and that's not so bad. Um, they've been around for an awful long time. Like this, it's, it's one of those animes that kind of just needs to end. But, you know, mm, mm, I can I can tolerate this. I'm interested in seeing if Sky Strikers still are like enough of a nuisance for Konami to want to hit this thing again. I don't think so, but you know, like who knows? I would still say that it's like still a, a, a strong pick for like a regional or something. It's still rather consistent. Um, it still has access to other negation, you know, components. So you can still use impairments, you can still use Effect Veiler and Ash Blossom. But Widow Anchor being able to steal things is going to be significantly curbed. And so for that reason, you know, cool, right? And it's interesting too that this is a ban list where the sort of top three decks or strategies, we'll call them, got hit and like nothing else got hit. So, you know, it's literally those three cards and everything else in this list was stuff coming back, which is all very interesting. I don't think that too many of the decks coming back are going to be like meta threats. Uh, if I had to pick one, I'd say maybe like heroes could be something and then maybe like a dark dragon sort of thing with like dark armed and malicious and think that type of stuff will probably be a little more viable but other than that um you know it's just neat this is just like neat stuff like dragonfly and ether and those sorts of things 
So yeah, all in all, as a ban list goes, I'm pretty satisfied with it. You know, it does the thing, it's cool. It's what a lot of us wanted, a lot of what we expected. Some decks went unharmed, Thunder Dragons went unharmed, Salamangrates went unharmed. So, you know, those decks will probably still be hanging around doing their thing, and that's fine. They aren't, you know, terribly unbalanced decks or anything. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm interested in hearing what you guys have to think. Let me know down in the comments your opinions, your thoughts, your predictions on where this format goes. This ban list is going into effect very soon. And I think if I'm correct, this is updated. The next one is going to be no sooner than January 13th. So right around the time that another new set will be releasing. Okay, so that's it for the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe, of course. I've got quite a lot of interesting Yu-Gi-Oh! content. We've got the Darktober thing coming up where we're gonna be showcasing a lot of new and interesting dark decks, which kind of got more interesting with this ban list. So be sure that you are tuned in for that. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, Trell has to build a Shadal deck now, so you know, I mean, you know. And um, yeah, okay, follow me on social media. Pick up the cards you wanna get on TCG Player, maybe using our link so that helps us out a little bit. Uh, there's a lot to pick up for this new format. I just ordered three Dark Arms, for instance. That's going to be it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Past turn.